we are. Amen. He is a protector. He is a provider. How many of us know that he's a provider? Yes. How many of us know he's a protector? Yes. How many know that he's great? Yes. How many, he's just not great, but he's better than great. Yes. He's the great I am. He's my provider. He's my protector. He's everything that you need. Amen. 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 Give God some praise in this house. We want to welcome our Facebook and YouTube listeners to the Call Worship Center. We pray that one day we will see your face in the place. 8340 Pippin Road, uh, Cincinnati, Ohio. We would love to have your face in the place, but there is a word from the Lord today, and we've been dealing with uh, the subject matter, overall theme of the church this year. Uh, when we have been filled with so many tragedies, disappointments, and death, and chaos over the last two, two and a half years, uh, every household has been affected and it seems like life has torn us down but God gave me an assignment to preach hope to preach that you don't have to feel like and you don't have to look like and you don't have to act like what you have been through that you can still despite Everything that you have been in and all that you have endured in the last two years, you can still live life on full. I want to preach this morning from John chapter 15. John chapter 15 verses 1 through 4. John chapter 15 verses 1 through 4. And it reads in our hearing, I am the true vine. And my father is the gardener. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purges it, that it may bring forth new fruit, more fruit. Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Did you hear that? It says, now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. And then he says, verse 4, he says, Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit on its own, except it live or abide in the vine, no more can you accept unless you abide in me. I want to preach this morning from, you may be seated, I want to preach this morning from the title, This Buzz For You. I know there's a slogan on a beer commercial about this bud being for you, but way before that commercial, something and someone butted up so that we would have life, and, 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 and my subtitle is Budding Up Against Jesus. Budding Up Against Jesus. See, many of us bud up against things that are, are meant to destroy us, and, and people uh, that mean no good for us. Many times we are budding up in the, uh, for the, in the wrong thing, and for the wrong people. But I'm here to tell you that when you bud up against Jesus, when you bud your life up against him, you will learn and you will discover that no matter what you're going through, no matter what comes your way, no matter where the attacks come, they may come from the east, north, south, and west. But when you are budding up and you abide in Jesus, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. It will come, but it will not kill you. It will come, it will not destroy you. I'm trying to get you to understand that even though attacks come, 
and, and enemies may try to destroy you, but you can still live life on full. But Pastor, I lost my job. I lost this. I lost my house. I lost my car. My husband walked away. My wife isn't doing what she's supposed to do. But when you abide and you live life on full, despite what is going on around you, when you are butted up against Jesus, when you are uh, butted up against him, uh, all those things may happen, but uh, it doesn't hit you like it hits the non-believer. It doesn't hit you like it hits everyone else. Because you know that he is resting in you. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You know that you got something in you that is greater than every attack, every demon, everything that tries to come your way and destroy you. Greater is he that is in you. It, 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 it puts a smile on your face. It, it, it turns your, your life around when you know that you have someone that you can count on in the, the midnight hour and when it seems like all hell is, is breaking loose and, and it seems like bad bills are coming. Uh, I said bells. I guess every time a bill comes, a bell rings. Every time I, it seems like bills and bells are coming, bells and bills and whistles, it seems like everything is coming and attacking you. But when you are resting and abiding in Him, yes. you got peace Amen. in the midst of chaos. You got peace. Look at Jesus. He's on the boat, and the storm is coming, and Jesus is laying and sleeping in the storm in the bottom of the boat. He's resting in the storm in the, and the boat is moving and swaying from left to right and the storm is about to take the boat out but Jesus finds himself resting in the boat. Matter of fact, he's not resting but he's sleeping. He's fast asleep. As a matter of fact, I believe he's sleeping good because most of us sleep good in a storm. Most of us sleep good in the rain. But Jesus was at the bottom of the boat and he was sleeping and the apostles were getting worried and, and, and they came down and they told him, uh, Jesus, care of you not that we perish? And, and Jesus said, just said this, peace be still. I'm trying to tell you, when you're going through and it seems like your boat is rocking, it seems like you're about to sink, just say peace. Be still. Be still. I'm here to tell you that. See, you can say that and you can believe that and he will come and he will rescue you when you are abiding in him. Here, the text in verse 1 says, I am the true vine. Why does Jesus have to say that I am the true vine? I'll tell you why. Because there were some false prophets that were claiming to be the Messiah. And they were going around uh, trying to heal people. And, and their healing power wasn't as strong or wasn't to the degree that, as a matter of fact, what they had was black magic. They had magic and, and sorcery. But Jesus said, I am the true vine. And, 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 and my father uh, who sent me, he's the gardener. Or he's the husband. He, he's the gardener. And he said, every branch, he's, he's talking about folks that follow him. He said, every branch in me that beareth not fruit. He says, if you are attached to me and, 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 and you are a believer of mine and, and it seems like it seems like you're not bearing fruit. It seems like the vine is withered away and died. It seems like there's no life in that bud. But Jesus said every branch in me that bears not fruit. He said he prunes it just like a good gardener. He prunes it. He cuts the dead pieces off of the vine so that there's life in the vine so where he cuts that is dead and he buries it but he said I'm the true vine and, 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 and when you're not bearing fruit he said he purges see God wants to cut the dead parts out of your life and don't be discouraged 
Uh, don't be discouraged, my friend, because God wants to cut the dead pieces of your life out. Because sometimes, and if you're not careful, what is dead will affect what is alive. The dead branch will soon, will soon take over because the disease in the dead branch, if we leave it attached, if you leave some people attached in your life, what is dead in them, what is disease in them, will start to infect, affect, infect, infect. What is alive in you? Sooner or later, the, the dead branch starts to affect what is alive in the vine. And it starts to kill. That's why Jesus said, I have to purge you every now and then. I have to cut some stuff out of your life every now and then. But sometimes we want to hold on to what God is trying to cut out. What God is trying to purge, we're trying to hold on to what God said let go of. We got to learn how to let go and let God. Somebody said let go. And it's going across the screen. Let go and let God. Let God have his way. Let God move in your life. Let God be the king of glory. Who is the king of glory? The Lord all are strong and mighty. The Lord mighty and bound. He is the king of glory. He is the king of glory. And allow the king of glory to come in. You'll be amazed when the king of glory, when you allow the king of glory, to come in. You'll be amazed at the change in your life. You'll be uh, like how Paul and Silas in Corinthians when they were in the jail and, and even in jail and prison, they learned to praise God. They learned in the midnight hour when they were chained up, when they were bound up, when they couldn't get loose in the dungeon, the jail up under the jail. And, and no one knew about them. And they start to praise God. And late in the midnight hour, God turned it around. He said, suddenly, I'm believing that somebody's going to have a suddenly in this place. Somebody's going to have a suddenly. Suddenly, God's going to turn your life around. Suddenly, God's going to do it. Suddenly, God's going to give you everything that you've been waiting on. Everything that God has promised you. When you praise him, he suddenly, I don't know how he does it. I scratch my head sometimes, but I can't figure him out. I tried to figure him out, but I have discovered, I have discovered that God is unfigurable. You can't figure him out. You can't get him out of your head. You can't get him out of your mind. He's in your heart. He's breathing for you. He's breathing the breath of life. I can't get him out of my hand. He's in my mind. He's taking over my thoughts. He's in my heart. Uh, late in the midnight hour, I don't know how he does it, but late in the midnight hour, God's going to turn it around and you're going to have a sudden experience. You're going to have a wild God experience. I can't tell you how many times that me and Pastor Pam have had a wild God experience because we have learned to rest in him. We have learned that he is divine. And God, whatever you got to cut me, whatever you got to snip me, whatever you got to purge me, whatever you got to take out of my life, whatever you got to move out the way, God, I'm ready and I'm available for whatever you have to do in my life. God, cleanse me and make me white as snow. God, I want to be in your fellowship. God, I want to be connected to the vine. God, you are the bud. And God, I want to bud up for you. I want to bud up for you, God. I'm tired of budding up the people and people that ain't growing. They ain't trying to do nothing. But God, I want to bud up for you. I want to be in your favor, God. I want to grow with you. I want to walk with you. I want to talk with you. Oh, uh, God, I want to be wherever you are. God, Whatever, 
whatever you're doing in this place, God, whatever you're doing in the lives of your people, God, don't forget about us, God. Don't forget about me, God. Whatever you're doing in this season, whatever you're doing in this place, God, you don't need a lot. You have demonstrated to me over the years when people leave you, when they don't see your vision and they leave you. God, your word is true. Your word says write the vision and make it plain so they that will see it will run. God, I need some folks that will run with the vision. Though they can't see it, though they don't understand it, they trust the God in their past. God, you gotta live, you gotta walk by faith and not by sight. I'm trusting. I'm trusting God to do what He promised. I don't know how He's going to do it, but Christy, suddenly, suddenly, I'm minding my own business. I'm driving down the road, and suddenly, I get a pat. I call for my pastor. He's in Arizona. Say, I got somebody. I just want you to say hi to, and suddenly. Suddenly, God will do it. That's the thing. Suddenly, God will do it. I'm riding down the street in my old car, and suddenly, my husband pulls in the new car line, and suddenly, I'm driving, and you got to walk by faith and not by sight. It's not there yet, but I'm trusting God that God will do it. God will give you something brand new. And if he don't give you something brand new, he'll make you brand new. It's coming. It's coming. I can feel it coming. I feel a push in my spirit. I feel a push in my spirit. I'm in the hospital, and I feel, and I see a woman getting ready to give birth. And the doctor says, get in a perfect position and get ready to push, push your promise out. Push your dream out. Push your man out. Push your car out. Push your whatever it is. Push your wife out. Push whatever it is that God has bound up in you. He said, push it out. Push it out. You can't be around some haters. Can't be around some folks that's dying and you stay connected to what's dead. God says you got to purge some people out of your life. And when you begin to purge them out of your life, you watch, I promise you, you watch what God will do. God will have you flying across the skies. I ain't gonna look at nobody. God will have you driving down 75 or uh, 71 from Maine, but I ain't gonna look at nobody. God will, will have you in a, a new house. Uh, size of a football field. I ain't gonna look at nobody. God will attach what you thought was dead. God will bring back to life. I ain't gonna look at nobody. I just know there's about five or six testimonies in this room to what God will do when you trust him, when you lay it out, when you give your life to God. I just know that what he will do when you trust him. There's no limit. We got to stop putting limits on God. We got to stop preaching, telling damnation to God's people. God, we have been through enough. The country and the people of God have been through enough. And we have to preach hope from the pulpit. We have to preach a God of grace from the pulpit. We have been beaten down and trampled on enough. We have had virus and disease and death after death. When are we going to speak life from the pulpit? God says he come to give you life and life more abundantly. I want the abundance of God's love. I want to live in the grace of God's love. I'm tired of getting beat up but I want the grace of God in my life. I want the grace of God in the people of God's life. I want the grace of God for you. Can we stand?
God's going to do it. This bud, when you bud up against Jesus, when you bud up against God, he will work it out every time. I don't know who I'm speaking to, but perhaps over the last two and a half years, life has beat you up. And you are tired of people dying around you. You are tired. There is no hope in the country. There is no hope. But God says, allow him to be your hope. Allow him to be your peace. Allow him to be your joy. Who am I talking about? I'm talking about Jesus the Christ, the Christian. And when you butt up against him, that means you rest in him. And everything that's in him, he said he desires to give it to you. God desires to give you peace, to give you joy, no matter what you're going through. What you have to do is say yes. The doors of the church are open. And what you have to do, and what you have to do out there in Facebook land, we love you. We love to have you in the house. But what you have to do is say yes. My friend Courtney, I met him. He's going to come here one day. But he says, just say yes. The doors of the church open. And if you are out there and you are looking for a church home and you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior or perhaps you know him. Today we offer you Jesus. Today we offer you Jesus. Today we offer you Jesus. Just say yes. Just say yes. Just say yes. Is there a yes in your spirit? Out there in Facebook, just say yes. Take yes. And we will message you. And you can message us and talk to me. Talk to my wife. Talk to our staff about your yes. Yes is the easiest thing. Easiest word that you can say.